people have been telling me not to game my entire life. Don't play these games. You're a kid. Go outside and play. When you're in high school, it's like, girls don't play COD. Med school, it was like, doctors don't game. Why are you playing GTA? Even when I decided that esports medicine and gamer health was something that I wanted to focus on, people are still telling me not to do this, and I still refuse to listen. This is the Humans of Gaming podcast, an open and honest conversation about games, life, and belief. Welcome to Humans of Gaming. I'm Drew Dixon. I'm the chief content nerd at Love Thy Nerd, and I'm joined by another nerd that's name is that's name is whose name <laughs> is whose name is Chris Gwaltney. Hey, I'm that Chris Gwaltney. I'm the chief executive nerd with uh, Love Thy Nerd, and yeah, this is Humans of Gaming, where we talk to talk to the people that make and participate in all these games that we love so much, and just get to know them better as people and hear what makes them go around and why they do what they do. So it's always a good time. It's always a great conversation. It's cool to share perspectives with people that think differently than you do and ha- be able to have a you know healthy dialogue surrounding that. And we find ourselves in a unique season of Humans of Gaming as well, where we're specifically speaking to women in the games industry. So, um, you know, one of the things that we've talked a lot about in the past is about how we'd like this podcast to be diverse, Mm -hmm. to have a diverse guest list. And, um, that's really important to us, but we haven't always like followed through with that. So with this season, we're sort of making ourselves, we're setting some, setting that as a goal and just going out and finding interesting people in the games industry. And we have a super interesting, uh, interview to share with you today with someone who's doing something you probably didn't even realize people are doing in the games industry and we're both uh you know we're both white dudes and so it's good for us too to to broaden our own horizons and talk to people that are very different than us um yeah that helps us grow as people so anyway uh what's going on with you drew what have you been playing man i have been playing a lot of scythe still uh big surprise i'm in a new campaign of rise of finris Mm -hmm. so my gaming group we finished a campaign of Rise of Fenris, and then they were like, hey, let's just do that again. So we are. <laughs> and I still love it. Uh, it's still the best. Uh, and then I'm playing, I'm also playing uh, when I can. It's been hard because I've been traveling and we've been having work done on our house and stuff, but Divinity Original Sin 2. So what about Top you? Top five game of all time for me. Yeah, I know. We need to talk about it sometime. Dude, I love it. Um, I've been playing a few different things. I, I'm kind of in a weird play. Like I've been playing a lot of League of Legends with friends. I'm trying not to play by myself. I actually played a few games by myself last night and I remembered why I don't play by myself because (laughs) I just get so much more ragey Mm -hmm. when I play by myself. Like I'm just too competitive and too into it. So I just need to keep the rage like bottled up at least yeah oh yeah oh yeah i'm i'm great at just bottling things up and burying them deep (laughs) deep down inside so Um, that you're not like ripping into your teammates at least yeah i will say though a great practice that i've learned for myself is when i get really ragey i would just type whatever i need to type into the chat but then i'll just delete it and not send it because then like you get it out of your system you vent it out and then you just delete it and it doesn't hurt anybody, you know, it's mm-hmm. just, I really wish good. you would have been able to be a part of this conversation that I had with Dr. M, otherwise oh, known as G- on, Gamer man. Doc, because she could probably help me, uh, yeah, help you, give you some advice about your yeah. anger I know and that rage, <laughs> um, <laughs> that unbridled rage inside of me. Yeah, but seriously, it only gamer comes doc, out during League of Legends. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, the gamer doc does get into these kinds of things. It's mm-hmm. um, she has a, a, a Twitch channel and puts videos on YouTube and uh, and all, and she has a website as well where she has a blog where she gets into these kinds of things. But the goal is she's a physician, she's a doctor mm-hmm. uh, who is passionate about gaming 
and wants to educate people basically like hey here's what you should know about um posture with regard to gaming here's yeah. some things you should know about um esports you get i just into... straightened up in my chair right now when you mentioned <laughs> posture yeah yeah um esports she'll get into things like you know there's all this talk about gaming disorder um mm-hmm. she talks about keyboards all kind you you name it if it has to do with human health and gaming uh she, she, she's into it. She's yeah. training people to think carefully and thoughtfully and uh, put our health uh, in perspective. Because I think that's something we don't talk about. Like we talk about totally. health with regard to sports, um, with regard to all kinds of, of things in life. Um, even with like work, that's a big thing nowadays is like making sure you're healthy at work, like stand up yeah. desks and, <laughs> and all these kinds of things. But um but there's, that's not a conversation that's having ha- happening amongst gamers. And there's even a stigma, I think, about gamers where we're all like super unhealthy or something. Mm-hmm. And so she wants to break that stigma and, uh, you know, help gamers make good, healthy decisions. And she's speaking as a gamer, right? So it's not coming right. from somebody who's like, you dumb gamers need to <laughs> get your act together. Um, yeah. So it's, it's really cool. That's so and, valuable. I'm so glad there's people like her. Because I never think about my health or anything regarding that. So it's nice that there are people that do and challenge me to think better about it. Because yeah. I've noticed as I've crossed the 30 threshold and beyond, um, my body just doesn't do what it used to. And I can't mm-hmm. hunch over like a gremlin in front of yeah. a laptop like I used to, you know? I've noticed that too. I mean, about you. Yeah, <laughs> about me hunching over like a gremlin, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, super excited for you to hear that. And fortunately, Chris will not be on this discussion because yeah. he was out of the country when we recorded it. Um, but it's okay. He's He doesn't have... I don't have coronavirus, coronavirus. as far yeah. as I know. Um, but I'd still keep your distance for just yeah. a few days from Chris just to be safe. That's right. Um, we should. We all need to do that. We all need to be practicing some social distancing. Of social distancing. That's right. I always love when we coin these phrases during these kinds of things. I'd never heard that phrase in my life. And now it's yeah. like the buzzword, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like the word yeah. orthogonal. I've yeah. never heard that word used out of the context of board games. That was yeah. the first time I'd ever heard that. And it's the only time I ever hear that word orthogonal. And you only hear it when you talk to like, oh, like a dyed in the wool board gamer. Yeah, you know? for You're sure. You're not going to hear like someone who's pretty into board games, but like, you know, doesn't have a, a nor or, like a weekly or biweekly gaming right. group. They're never yep. going to use the word orthogonal. Never. I use it all the time. <laughs> orthogonal. Now you do. Once yeah. you know it, it's like, hey, I got to prove my gamer cred here. Hey, before we jump into this interview, um, we just want to let you know about a couple things Love Thy Nerdwise, and um, one of those is we have an entire podcast network. This isn't the only podcast that we do. It's the only one that Drew and I do, but we have other uh, super talented people that do podcasts for us, and one of those is called the Poll List Podcast, and this is with uh, Chris and Hector, and I'm telling you, like, these two dudes are absolute experts when it comes to comics, Uh, and that is, this is the comic podcast. Um, and it, it, they know so much and yet I think they do a good job of still inviting new people to the table or to the book or whatever. Um, so yeah, if you're into comics, if you have a, 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 you know, interest in comics, like check it out, listen to those guys, they know their stuff and Mm -hmm. their passion is absolutely contagious. Um, yep. so check it out. Pull list podcast on the love thy nerd podcast network. Yeah. And if you're someone who's like wanting to dip your toe into the world of comics, um, it's a great podcast to listen to, to like know where to start. Cause they, yeah. they read the good stuff, you know? I mean, they not do. that there's lots, of, I'm sure there's lots of good stuff they don't read. Cause there's so much good comics around right now, but still it would be a great way to sort of like experience um, some great comics in mm-hmm. the context of community. Cause not only can you listen to this podcast, you can go into the love thy nerd community and chat with these guys on our love thy nerd community. If you ask to join, um, and you can, you know, continue talking about 
what's going on in the world of comics. And hey, if you need some extra stuff to do during all this self-quarantining time, um, you know, pick up some comics. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. And I also want to mention um, one of the ways you can support things like The Pull List and Humans of Gaming and our website and our ministry, our, ministry, our, our work that we do at uh, conventions is, um, yeah, give to Love Thy Nerd. Um, if you will go to lovethynerd.com slash give and consider um, donating to what we're doing, that's mm-hmm. how things like this exist. Like this costs money for us to put this podcast out into the world. It costs us time, which is also costs us money. Um, and all every initiative we do, if you think Love Thy Nerd is cool in any way, like just just think about uh, helping us out um, would be amazing. So, and if you do, you can be a part of Fellowship of the Nerd, which is this super cool private Facebook group where you kind of get a unique view into the world of Love Thy Nerd, of what Mm -hmm. we're doing. Um, And you get to hear about our plans before anybody else. You get to contribute to our plans before anyone else. You get to Mm -hmm. um, have a special... A part in things that we're doing like Love Thy Nerd Con, LTN Con, which is going to be in Louisville in October. Um, so yeah, uh, that's 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 the pitch. Would love for you to think about supporting us. And not just think about it, just like do it. Yeah, that's Just do it. Just do it. With that said, this is uh, my into it. and Gamer Doc, Dr. M. This is our conversation. Hey, welcome to Humans of Gaming. I'm Drew Dixon. I'm one of the hosts of this podcast. Chris Gwaltney usually hosts with me, but he's been doing some international travel and just got home, barely made it back to the States. Uh, And so I'm really glad he made it back, but he's jet lagged and couldn't make it with us this morning um, or this afternoon. But uh, okay, so I'm here with Dr. M, also known as Gamer Doc. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show and I'm looking forward to it. Do you prefer Dr. M or do you prefer Gamer Doc? Uh, you know, you can call me Dr. M, you can call me Doc, whatever you want. And you do a lot of things, like you're a streamer, you're, uh, you're a doctor, uh, <laughs> you, you uh, are giving out medical advice, for, you're involved in esports. How would you frame kind of the work that you do? Uh, that's a really good question, right? Like finding, targeting the audience and targeting what I do. Uh, you sound like my business coach, but I, <laughs> I am a gamer and I am a medical doctor. And what I'm trying to do is help people enjoy my favorite hobby for as long and as healthy as possible. Yeah. So what does that look like on a day to day? How are you helping, uh, gamers enjoy their hobby? Yeah. So there's a lot of really large misconceptions out there about gaming. Um, one of them is that you, you can't get injured. Uh, and then another one is that, you know, you're 18, 19, 20, 21, and the things you do when you're that age don't matter. So what I'm trying to do is raise awareness about the things that you can be susceptible to while you are gaming, even if you're a casual gamer. I mean, I'm a casual gamer. I'm not going to win any money with my skills. But uh, so raising awareness about that and then giving simple preventative tips so that those things are avoidable and not an inevitability. Yeah, yeah. Can you give us like some of the most common examples of like what's what's some some things? What's like maybe the number one thing that someone who's really into games doesn't realize about the connection with their gaming and their health? I would say posture. Uh, We all have terrible posture when we're gaming unless we're actively thinking about it, right? So if you're a console gamer, you're leaning forward on your elbows, you know, you're resting your forearms on your legs when you get into that heated position. If you're sitting at a computer chair, you're slouched forward, you know, you're resting your elbows on the desk. Um, So, you know, one of the things we really like to like to teach is, is ergonomics at the desk, because if you set up your desk properly, then you don't have to worry about your posture most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I guess, you know, probably something, I mean, maybe I'm stereotyping a little bit, but something a lot of gamers don't even think about. Exactly. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah, say? you're 100% correct. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of, most people don't think about it. You know, we, we all spend all day at our desks. So mm-hmm. it's not just about gamers. It's about everyone. Uh, 
So you're completely right. Can you share another example of some things that maybe you're you've been able to speak into in the world of of gaming that uh, that maybe you know most people don't 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 think about some other health issues. What are some other common health issues that you that you tackle? Uh, eye strain. Eye strain is a big one. We aren't meant. You know, if you think about where we were 100 years ago, where you think about now, we weren't meant to stare at a screen, you know, a foot in front of us all day. Uh, so, mm-hmm. you know, that puts puts a lot of strain on our eyes. So, you know, the experts recommend getting your eyes checked once a year if you're at a high-risk population, which are people who game, uh, to prevent further eye strain. Uh, so eye strain is a, a big one. And, and ha- giving your eyes a break. So I like to say the 20-20-20 rule. Every 20 minutes, look at a spot 20 feet away for 20 seconds. And that's going to help, you know, prevent your eyes from getting overworked and overtired. Um Nutrition is a huge issue in the gaming community. Uh, you know, I have had the times where, you know, it's been a Saturday and all I want to do is play video games for nine hours and you've got your squad and you don't want to step away to make some food. So you run downstairs, you grab whatever's easy, you grab whatever's quick. Uh, and mm-hmm. then, you know, if you're, and if you're doing this on a regular basis, daily basis, those, those health choices add up. So um, just educating people on the basics of, of nutrition and things like dehydration is also super important. Yeah. Where did you get the idea to, to tackle these issues? Like where did that, where, what was the impetus? It's a, it's a really long story. So I'll give you the uh, tweet chat version. But, okay, great. Uh, basically, so when, when you go to medical school, uh, this, this, this phenomena starts happening where despite... Which you can knock out in like a couple of years, right? It's super easy. Yeah, yeah super medical easy. School. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Wicked, right. wicked easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this phenomenon starts happening where people start asking you tons of medical questions, tons yeah. of them. And in the beginning, it's kind of cool because you, you know, if you wanted to be a doctor for 20 years and you finally are working towards that goal, you're finally learning things. Mm-hmm. But they, they start asking you about like their moles and they start, you know, asking for antibiotics and whatever. So that's going to be fun when people ask you about their moles. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. Sure you it, enjoy that. When they start like <laughs> unbuttoning stuff, or then I'm out, you know, like as soon as the, as the zipper comes down, I'm like, I'm out, man. I don't You're care. Like, hey, about I don't know you that well yet. Yeah. <laughs> Random man in the bar. Oh, uh, gosh. So this was happening to me in real life. But it was also happening to me when I was gaming because I was playing a lot of COD yeah. at the time. Uh, and I had, you know, my, my, my same group of people who I would go to every night and I would play with every night. And so we'd be playing and I was really into Search and Destroy at this time. So, you know, I'd be clutching up because they were all idiots, but I love them. They're my special idiots. Um, but <laughs> they, I'd, I'd be like clutching up and there'd be like two people left and I'd be left and I'd be like chilling behind the bomb, crouching, looking for enemies. And one of my buddies would be like, Hey, so Doc, you know, what, what, my 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 pinky's really been bothering me recently, and I'm like, dude, just chill out. You've asked, you've talked to me about this like multiple times. I've told you to go to your doctor. I've told you to like, this is this is my chill out time. This is not my on time. Uh, but it like it didn't stop. It got worse. Uh, and so these people will go, you know, my my squad mates would be going to their doctors with because they're a little bit older. Um, with finger tingling, neck pain, back pain. And the doctor says, you know, when does it hurt you? And it's like, oh, well, well, I'm I'm gaming. So the doctor, of course, is going to say, well, then stop gaming. But that's not an acceptable answer, right? That's not, you're not going to tell a marathon runner that enjoys running, oh, you have to completely stop running. So I got, you know, that was an unacceptable answer to me, and it still is. So that's where the I the idea evolved uh, as, as you're sharing your story i was curious like didn't anyone tell you in medical school to like stop gaming like hey you don't have time for all this you're a doctor you have to <laughs> you have to to be super serious and uh was yep. there any like i'm just curious was there any stigma uh, around because i think like there's still that weird stigma about games sometimes especially i think about it in that sphere too but maybe i'm wrong no you're completely right that people have been telling me not to game my entire life. Um, yeah. You know, when I was a kid, it was like, don't play these games. You're a kid. Go outside and play. And then it was when you get older, when you're in high school, it's like, girls, don't play COD. And then in 
med, med school it was like yeah i mean you know med, doctors don't game why are you playing gta and running around <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh and even when i decided that esports medicine and gamer health was something that i wanted to focus on a lot of my mentors said this is a bad idea this isn't going to mm. be anything um, yeah so people are still telling me not to do this and i still refuse to listen amazing well it sounds like you've uh you've established you know something of a following and and are doing so tell me about some of the projects you've got going on regarded to to you know this ad advice that you're giving and uh work that you're doing uh, on, on gaming health so i'm trying to you know, there's a lot of ways that you can go once you've decided to go down this path. Uh, you can go towards the direct patient care option, right? Like you can mm -hmm. be a, you can have a gaming clinic, a gaming health center. Uh, you can be a team physician for some of these esports teams. And, you know, are I, there I, a lot of those nowadays? There's not a huge amount, but more and more healthcare conglomerates are realizing that this is a good idea. Um, so there, there's more and more, a lot of them tend to be sports medicine doctors who aren't necessarily gamers. Uh, so that's, uh, that's another issue that we're working on right now is, is providing education to those healthcare providers. Uh, but my, the way my thinking is, I sat down about a year ago after I had been doing this for a year, and I said, all right, what, what, how am I going to be most effective and how am I going to use my talents to reach the most amount of people. So if I have a full clinic of patients, I can see about 30 patients a day on my busy days. Mm -hmm. um, and if I'm a sports medicine, if I'm a, the team doctor for an esports team, I can treat, you know, six to eight players over the course of a season. But if I make one video that educates 10,000 people, that's a much larger impact factor. So what, what I'm really focusing on recently is taking the information that's out there in these buried in these medical journals that no one is going to find and that no one listens to and putting it into a palatable way and an entertaining way that people want to listen. Yeah. And so that's really my, that's really my focus right now because it doesn't matter what you have to say if no one's listening. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So you're doing that on, on Twitch and mm -hmm. YouTube and what else? Yeah, so you know, I really started on Twitter. Um, I, I, my my Twitter account, I formed it October of 2018. I had never used Twitter before. I had hated social media before this. I had no form of social media before this. Uh, I started on the Twitter, started making content, and then went over to YouTube after a couple months. And now I'm doing a lot of work on Twitch. Um, Wednesday nights, I usually have a different guest expert in the field. Um, who I talk, we talk about some aspect of gamer health, some aspect of gamer wellness. Uh, yeah. So those are really the, the the top three right now. So like, what was the last one that you did on YouTube about? Uh, the tw on Twitch. Oh yeah, sorry, Twitch. Uh, it was actually really cool. I, so I was at PAX East a week and a half ago, and I met a bunch of people from the Take This group, which yeah. is a nonprofit. Yeah. So they're nonprofit who are uh, working on mental health in the gaming community. And I had known Dr. Rachel Cohort beforehand. She had been a guest on my stream, but I met yeah. um, Dr. Sarah Sawyer, who is a geek therapist, uh, certified geek therapist, and who uses, you know, video games and geek culture to treat her patients. She's a licensed psychologist who practices in uh, Washington state. And so, you know, you meet someone and you immediately just hit it off and your personalities just just gel together. So I knew that I wanted her on my show. So she was on my show on Wednesday and we talked about how video games affect our personality, how video games affect our lives. And we also mm. talked about how um, important representation is in gaming. Yeah, that's really cool. So what what's an, an example that maybe you unpacked in that conversation that to... to uh, point our listeners to of why they why they should check out your stream. Uh, so I think you know checking out my stream. It's funny how you you said earlier uh, that I've gained a following. It's funny because it's like it's not it's not really a following. It's just the people who tune in for my stream, the people who follow on Twitter, the people who tune in for my YouTube videos are smarter than your average bunch. Hmm. They are the people who want to know why things happen. They want to know how things happen and they want to be in charge of their health, in charge of their bodies. Um, so if you're someone who wants to know, 
you know, the why of why your back hurts when you're gaming and the why of why drinking water makes you a better gamer uh, or why exercising beforehand makes you a better gamer. Um, those are really the people who should tune in. It's it's definitely it's it's not a passive experience. Um, I'm definitely going to make you think where yeah. we do do we do, we joke around a lot. It is entertainment, but it's also, um, you know, it's, it's a brain workout. Yeah, I like to think so. So, I mean, those are really if that's something that you're interested in, check us out. Yeah, that's great. And I, I hope that that's the I hope that that's I think that's a stigma that gamers have, right? That we're not super healthy. So I hope that's true. Do you think that's changing? I, I mean, know, I was just thinking about how like the stereotype would be who would want to watch that channel because the last thing that gamers are thinking about <laughs> is, is health. <laughs> right. Uh, but I hope that's I, I have a sense that maybe that's changing, but I'd be curious to hear your perspective. It is changing. So uh in the beginning, you know, that you can either take the top down or the bottom up approach, bottom up being like trying to educate the masses. Uh, but a lot of times now what we're seeing is the top down. So streamers being open about their health journey. Um, mm. You have people like Hamlin's, uh, who's been really open about his mental health or Daquan, who's been really open about his back pain. Uh, and then you have streamers like Ninja, who are recent, who's recently trying to get in shape again and eat healthier or yeah. Kurt JD, who's been making, you know, an effort to get healthier. Uh, so it's really, you know, we, we do have a, I wouldn't say that gamers in general are unhealthy. I say we have an unhealthy culture. Yeah, um, we champion the person who does the twenty-four hour stream. Mm. We chug energy drinks and slam them against our foreheads before going back to gaming, um, and that's just that's the that's the culture. But the the culture is changing, uh, and it's it's changing, you know, due to people being really open about their journeys with mental health and physical health. So, what do you say to like someone who's trying to make it in esports because i think the perception is with regard to these kinds of things with it, with regard to their physical health because i think there's this like assumption and uh, and and maybe it's right i don't know i you're the professional here <laughs> not me so i'm going to lean on you uh but this you know i've got to play all the time and if i don't like and i've got and even like i think there's this perception of i've got to play all the time now while i'm in my prime because my concentration level and all that kind of stuff's going to dip. Um, and so I think, I think there's a real temptation to just like wear yourself out completely. Mm -hmm. Uh, so how, what do you, what, what, what's your like advice to someone who's trying to make it there of like why they shouldn't do that? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you can tell them that it's bad for their health, but no one listens to that. Uh, right. What, what I say is, you know, LeBron James, one of the, greatest basketball players of all time i've heard of him yeah, yeah for once or twice <laughs> he, he doesn't scrimmage basketball all day he doesn't yeah. wake up in the morning eat a protein bar and then go to the court and play for 12 hours why mm -hmm. doesn't he do that well because it's not the most effective way to train there's right. something called cognitive fatigue if you're doing an activity for more than two three hours you're going to decay your performance is going to decay and you're probably not going to get much better um, there is a lot of things we can take from traditional sports and apply them to esports. And training schedules is a huge one. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I've I've worked with a couple teams. I've I've been I've seen the inside of how a couple esports teams work. And the most successful ones will start their day with a little warm up session, some sort of physical activity like yoga or stretching, and then they'll they'll you know they'll get in the the lab and they'll play games for two, three hours, they'll scrimmage, they'll, they'll do things like that. But then they're out and they're doing other things. They're doing VOD review. They're doing match review. They're studying from their opponents. Uh, and then, you know, they're, they're focusing on nutrition. They're focusing on taking breaks. Um, and then, th and then they're getting back to it. You know, they'll do another session in the afternoon. So if you think that, getting up in the morning and streaming or gaming for 14 hours is going to make you a better player. I can tell you that that's not the way to do it. Not only is it bad for your health, but it's, it's the wrong way to train. And you, I, I think I saw this online. You're a hockey player. <laughs> I am. I dabble so is in that your, hockey. Is that your, your preferred form of exercise? Uh, so 
It it is. Uh, I I broke my hand a couple weeks ago though, so I haven't oh, been no. able to play. Actually, I got my first game. I got back last night. Uh, so I I've been missing hockey. But uh, what I, position do you play? I play center. Okay. Uh, nice. Not because usually the center is the best one, but that's not the reason. It's because I have to chase the puck wherever it goes. I'm like a <laughs> seven year old playing soccer. Uh huh. So my yeah. team was like, well. Got to put her at center. Otherwise, she's not going to be in the right position. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I've been I've been uh, I've been doing spin recently, which is so basic. But I've been getting up. <laughs> I've been doing 7 a.m. spin classes. Yeah. I know because because my hand's been broken. So there's like literally I can run and I can do spin. Yeah, it actually sounds fun. I mean, maybe not now because of like COVID and stuff, but um <laughs> But I, I'm a big cyclist, so I do a lot of mountain biking. Um, oh, cool. It's kind of my if – I, if I can exercise the way I want to exercise, I'll get out on Definitely. the trails and ride. But um, like the, just spin classes seem like they would be more – like I, I have a trainer that I ride my bike on sometimes when I can't, when it's rainy or whatever, mm-hmm. and I hate it. It's the yep. worst. Yep. It's so boring. So spin class sounds fun because it seems like it would be more social and like – I don't know. They like push you and stuff to go harder, I guess. Exactly. Right? And I'm Seems just like so competitive. I'm so competitive uh, that so they, they'll they'll blare the music. So you're so that's really great. But then they'll put your name and score how fast you're going up on a leaderboard. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, and you can opt out of the leaderboard if you want to. But I'm so competitive that I push myself way more yeah. in that scenario to get to that top five spot than than I would at home. Yeah, it's funny how like so much of our lives have been sort of like gamified, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you heard of Strava? Do you know what that is? Uh, it's the Google thing. No, no, it's no. um, it's more or less like social media for fitness people, I guess. Oh wow, no, I haven't heard of it. But like you, you can record if you have a phone or a fitness watch, you can record your runs or your rides, like your bike rides or, or, or trail runs or runs or whatever. And then you can follow your friends, they can follow you and you can give each other kudos for doing the ride. And, but they, they have leaderboards oh. where you can actually get like trophies, uh, and stuff. So like, um, there's a local trail here where I live where like, I finally got the King of the Mountain trophy. <laughs> Congratulations. You know, where like I had, well, just on like one section of it. So, but it was like a big deal for me because I was like, man, I've, that must mean I've really improved. (laughs) And so anyway, it's just funny how, but then like a few weeks later, one of my buddies beat my time and I'm like, dang, I got to get back out of the trail. But it's just funny. I sort of realized like, I'm, this is kind of like the way a lot of the same reason we are motivated to play video games a lot of times, you know, Mm -hmm. it's the same sort of deal. But, um, so are you a big hockey NHL fan? Uh, so I actually, an, another thing I do is I run a talk show for the National Women's Hockey League on Monday nights. Oh, cool. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm more an NWHL fan, yeah. but I also really like the NHL. Um, very cool. Yeah. So that's very fun. So you wear a lot of hats. <laughs> I do. I wear a lot of hats. <laughs> I do. I, uh, I just, I have a lot of energy and I'm very passionate about certain things. Um, so I, I like to get involved. So I like to. I like to make an impact. Yeah. Is the NWHL uh, canceled for the rest of the season? So they had one game left, and it was tonight, and it was the finals. It was the final game, and it got postponed. Well, at least it's just postponed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... It's kind of like, we're not really sure what's going to happen with... Did they say what's going to happen with the NHL? It's just postponed, or is it off? Okay. I think it's postponed. I mean, just from a business standpoint... I can't imagine them not resuming the right. games. Yeah. From from like a purely capitalist standpoint. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, I can't imagine how they could afford to do that. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm a big. Well, I say I'm a big. I've. I'm a big Nashville Predators fan most of the time. Ooh. But it's been hard this season because yeah. they've just been really underperforming, in my opinion. So I'll admit to have having like taken a break. Yeah. <laughs> I go through like, like splurges where i'm like okay this is not adding to the enjoyment of my life so i'm gonna have to take a break <laughs> it's actually <laughs> n- decreasing the enjoyment in right. my life that was yeah. when i really i i've been i've 
been really into playoff hockey. Uh, and mm-hmm. that was when I first got into playoff hockey when it was like the Preds and oh, the yeah. Ducks and mm-hmm. um, the Knights were all in. Yeah, like, that was that was a really good series. I think the Sharks were in it, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was a great series. I've I've enjoyed the Preds, and I was very surprised to see their rankings this season. Yeah, yeah, it's a bummer. Uh, they, you know, they fired Peter Laviolette, and it's uh, they. I mean, they're still in playoff contention, but they just they've they're just super inconsistent. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Who's your team? Uh, so I'm from Detroit originally. So the Red Wings were my team, but living in DC. Uh, for the past four years, it's hard not to get caught up in Caps fever. So, big Caps fan now. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you know, your team won a cup not yeah. too long ago. So I, I was I was downtown when they won. Yeah. Yep. I went I went to I went downtown when the Predators were in uh, in the Stanley Cup against the Penguins and watched a couple games, but uh, unfortunately they didn't pull it out. But it was like it was it was cool. Like Nashville's totally become a hockey city really it's like it's the big ticket in town so that's awesome kind of cool uh all right well we do like to kind of get personal so you said you grew up in detroit what was your like what was your upbringing like uh it was it was awesome uh i am so lucky i am a very lucky human Mm. uh my parents are amazing Uh, my mom's a teacher my dad owned a really small silk screening shop um, we grew up in a suburb right outside of Detroit. Um, have a wonderful older sister who we didn't get along for a little while, but now we, you know, we're each other's best friends. Um, it was it was great. My sister is the golden child, um, yeah. but lucky for me, she hurt herself at a really young age and couldn't do sports. Mm. So athletics was where I excelled. Athletics was where I made a name for myself because no one was going to be smarter than Lauren. Um, so, uh, you know, I was, you became a doctor. That's a pretty big deal. (laughs) She, uh, they don't just hand those out. She, she runs a, a large money fund. So, okay. (laughs) She wins. (laughs) She She wins. wins. Yeah. Um, but I had, I just, I had a wonderful, bringing i was very thankful to be around a, a whole village of people who loved me yeah that's great mm-hmm. and uh did you like grow up in a church or anything is that a part of your upbringing yeah my family is 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 super active in the presbyterian church in our town uh the highlights of my childhood were going to church camp every summer yeah uh, camp wakanda it was in a a sick it was a six hour bus ride we took the gypsy rover up every summer was that and- north or south North. So okay. I live right outside Detroit, which is like the thumb of the mitten. And right. we would go up to where like the fingers meet the palm. Okay. So um, not the UP, but. No, gosh, no. Yeah. It takes like 13 hours to get to the UP from where I, I always live. forget that. It's Michigan's like, huge. Yeah. I forget how big it is. Uh, but yeah, the, I just, you know, I, it was actually, we had a game night here at my house Saturday night. And after, you know, a few glasses of wine, we realized I was trying to get someone to. We were playing the the game where you have the the circular thing that beeps, and you have to get people to say the name on it. Catchphrase is that catchphrase? Yes, yeah. There you go. You got and, it. And uh, my clue was rise and shine. Uh-huh. So I go and give God the glory, glory, man. <laughs> and yeah. uh, both of my teammates look at me like I am, like I've lost my mind. <laughs> and then as soon as the buzzer went off. My two buddies on my on my on the other team start getting up and they start singing it with me and we all started singing it with me and then we degenerated into church songs for like ten minutes. It was, it was a great experience. That's funny. I have a terrible voice, so you know any opportunity to sing, I jump at. <laughs> so you were into it. You were really like into church and stuff growing up. Yeah, growing up, I, I was super super into it. Um, I had also you know very lucky the privilege of being in a church where. Uh, it wasn't about the judgment. It was about the support. Mm. So um, we, we did a lot of mission trips. We, we built a lot of houses. Uh, there was really not a lot of judgment. There was just a lot of caring for your neighbor. Um, my, my, my grandma, so my grandparents moved to the town that I grew up in when they were young. Um, and then my whole family's lived there ever since. So the church was really was our was our second home because my my grandma grew up in it my dad grew up in it um and then our whole family yeah. grew up in it 
that's great because we have a lot of like we have a lot of folks that come on the podcast who are um kind of have i mean we get some of both i guess but you know had the experience of of going to church camp and those kinds of things and feeling like it was a pretty like judgy experience so it's cool that yeah yours was you know like a good experience for you so where are you like is that still a part of your life now or have you moved on from the church or what what where are you at now I'm, it's definitely not a big part of my life anymore um, for multiple reasons. One being like when you're 18 years old, you're not going to get up and go to church on a Sunday anymore. Um, but yeah. it's not where, you know, talking about in my life what what I want my – I don't have any kids yet, but um, talking about what I would want my kids to do and thinking about such the positive impact that that environment had on me um, – I've been talking about, you know, finding a community like that to hmm. create, you know, f- just because I wouldn't want to deprive my kids of that experience that I had. Yeah. Yeah. So you would like, would you call yourself a, a, a Christian or what do you, do you think in those terms? Uh, I'm, I would not prescribe to any particular religion anymore. Um, yeah. I tend to, to rebel against rules. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Sure. Uh, so I, I'm not into, you know, the writings and the, I'm more into the community aspect, into, into mm-hmm. the, the love your neighbor aspect and into the more of the goodwill. Um, yeah. but I, I wouldn't say that I was like a religious person anymore. Yeah. Um, that's interesting because I think, um, like a lot of the work that you do is kind of wrapped up in that idea of like trying to help people yeah be better and healthier and like loving your neighbor right Mm -hmm. yeah um so but it's also interesting to me that like you mentioned wanting to considering like getting back into church just for the community aspect of it because i think that's something that kind of like hard for us in this day and age to find consistent community you know Mm -hmm. where where people will get together for, you know, and think, and like, think about how can we love and serve and help one another? Um, because I, like, I, I lived in Alabama for a while before we came to Nashville for about five years. Um, and that was like, our church was like the only place for that. It felt like, you know, Mm -hmm. I think you have more options if you live in a place like DC maybe, but still we're like, our culture is really closed off from each other. You know what I mean? Like we're very connected online I think, but sometimes it's really hard to like build those meaningful relationships uh, in person. Mm-hmm. So, I've been lucky I, enough to have a, like a women's hockey community um, in the DC area, when, mm. which is a, it's a huge community, but it's yeah. there's something going on every night, and there's always someone willing to extend a hand if you need something. Mm. Um, That's so, cool. Yeah, it's it's without without sports, I, I can't imagine what community mm-hmm. I would have here. Yeah. Yeah. I think about that too. Cause for me, it's like either mountain biking or board games. Cause like through, through, uh, in the last couple of years where I sort of like re it's sort of like mountain biking, sort of my, um, I told people it's like my midlife crisis thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's like, a, I There's tell my wife, things. yeah, I'm like, this is a really health, healthy midlife crisis. I mm-hmm. feel like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. It's not cheap, but it's a lot cheaper than like a sports car. Yes, definitely. Um, so, uh, but it's been cool just to now I have like this group of guys I can go ride in the woods for a couple hours, a few mm-hmm. t- a couple times a week, and then there's this group of guys um, that I play board games with, and most of them are uh, actually most of them are Mormons. Kind of interesting um, because my neighbor was. Mormon and he invited me to his church one time to like a board game group and so then he connected me to all these guys and so now once every other week I go play board games with them which is cool because it's like how else would I get to know people from that yeah you know that group so um so anyway all that to say if you're feeling lonely <laughs> go play board games or right? uh, or 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 a uh, hockey right there there <laughs> and yeah or during a church there was actually so I when I was in DC um with part of my job, we were marching in the pride parade. Um, and there was a, a a shooter scare. Um, Oh gosh. So 
we like everyone started running and everyone started fleeing um and a couple people got like kind of hurt kind of trampled oh and gosh. uh I, so i was taking care of one of those people until the ems arrived and then uh as the ems was arriving there was another scare um so everyone started running again and me i'm running with like the group i'm with and there's a, a Quaker church to the left and there's a woman, everyone's running and there's a woman running towards us and she's yelling, come into our church, come into our church. So we ran into the Quaker church and we sheltered in place for like three hours until the police handled the situation. And uh, I, I want to go back to that church. I, I've, I want to, I want to go back to that church and like be a mm. part of, be a part of that community because it was just such a, defining moment when that you know we're all running from danger and this woman's running towards yeah. us to offer yeah. shelter yeah that's amazing and that's the sort of thing that like because i think a lot of times we have these assumptions about people from different um you know, like worldviews or walks of life or whatever and we just assume like we're not going to see eye to eye on these things but then in a situation like that you realize like well one how much we need each other but then two like you see people's real character you know in a way mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that kind of can i don't know break down some of those barriers that's really cool yeah um so so you grew up in michigan and you uh you were going going to church camp every year and um when did you decide you were gonna go into med school <laughs> uh i was in eighth grade and my literature teacher mrs stashu who I respected more than uh, any other teacher I, I had encountered thus far in my life. She she had been, actually been, she had known that I was bored with school, I was bored with class. And so she was giving me different college level books at the end of class every day. And then she'd make me write a oh, book cool. report uh, oh, wow. every, every two weeks on it. I know I'm such a nerd. And I That's loved amazing. It. I loved it. I loved it. And you just, you were just into it. I was you. so into it because I was just bored with school. Um, and she, I just respected her so much. And she was talking to us about um, a class she had had about 15 years ago. And she said, you know, that was the best class I've ever had. Eight of them became medical doctors. And oh, so wow. when I, so my eighth grade brain, I'm like, medicine. I'm going to become a do doctor. You know, Miss Stacey rep uh, respects them. I'm going to become a doctor. Uh, and that's really when I got the first inkling of that idea. So... Obviously, I, you know, I tried to do my due diligence and explore uh, yeah. what options were out there. And mm -hmm. I, I liked it. I, I like I liked having a skills, a skill that I could use to help other people. I liked yeah. that no matter what political climate or market or anything that was going on, I could be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, you know, a lot of, you know, some of us really think about the zombie apocalypse and I'm one of them. Like if I, was, <laughs> if I was living outside of a big city, I would definitely have a survival bunker just for funsies. But, um, you know, I feel like I'd be helpful in the zombie apocalypse. So Yeah, <laughs> sounds like it. I mean, you probably have like a, a hockey stick that you could hit zombies with and stuff right yeah exactly so. yeah yeah totally <laughs> you can put on your pads and double-ended hockey stick too so i can like do do like the twirly thing yeah Take yeah with either side yeah um, and i mean and you play video games too so you probably figure out a way to like make it to where the hockey stick has like a blade in it that comes out <laughs> somehow and chops yeah, yeah, the yeah. zombies and stuff yeah definitely that's probably like the trigger button <laughs> yeah yeah definitely <laughs> So that's really where med school first came up, my idea first came about, um, which, you know, I feel like a lot of people get into the medical field for the wrong reasons. Um, they're either getting they pushed in by their parents who are doctors or they want to make a lot of money or they want to have some some sort of perceived prestige. Um, so I don't think mine was the worst reason, but, uh, you know, I'm I just... I really, I really like having the ability to help other people. It's, it hmm. makes every day satisfying. So, where did you go to med school? Uh, Long Island. Ah. Long Island. I, uh, <laughs> I when I was interviewing for med schools, I thought that Long Island was a borough of New York City. Uh huh. It, uh, spoiler alert: it's not. 
<laughs> it's not. Um, okay. So it was actually like 45 minutes outside of the city, which I was really disappointed about. I didn't know that either. Yeah. So Long Island's huge. Long Island is to get from one end of Long Island to the other. It takes like two hours of driving. Oh, gosh. Um, it's, I didn't yeah, know it's huge. That. But the so it's not a borough of New York City. So once I realized that, I quickly moved to Brooklyn um, and then did some virtual classing. Nice. Uh, uh, so did you like it there? I, I love Brooklyn. I loved it. I, I spent, um, you know, three years in med school there. And then I did my intern year there as well. Um, and I was very sad to leave it. Um, but, you know, it. it the thought of living in New York City again actually stresses me out. Now it does. Yeah, now it does. Now as I'm like a little bit older, my priorities are different. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I had that experience. It, it shaped yeah. me. It changed me. It made me who I am. But um, yeah, what stresses you out about the idea now? Uh, just everything is more difficult there. Hmm. Uh, you know, so I live in D.C., which is is to me the perfect size city. Um, hmm. But if I like, if you want to go to a restaurant, there's going to be an hour and a half wait. If you want to go to a bar, you're going to have to wait, you know, behind stacks of two people to get a drink. Uh, but the, the, the sheer amount of people there is what gives it its character. It's what's, it, what makes it, what made me love it so much. But the thought now not having to do that anymore, it makes me stressed out. I can totally understand that. Yeah. It's a, uh... I now that I have kids, mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. I could never like the thought when I first moved to Nashville. I was because Nashville is actually the, the biggest city I've lived in. So I've oh, never wow. lived in a city the size of uh, of New York or something, or or, or even DC. But um, I remember when I first moved here and I actually worked downtown. I was like, oh, it'd be so cool to live down here. But now that I have three kids, I'm like, no, it's <laughs> never it's never happening. It's never gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't even really want. Every once in a while, I'm like, oh, this would be fun, but. Most of the time, I don't even really want to. So, um, yeah. so yeah, just wait till you have kids. You won't. You won't even <laughs> want to live in DC anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love. So I love being able to bike anywhere I want to go. I love being able yeah. to walk. I love being able to take public transportation. But when mm. you have kids, you're not going to want to do that. So yeah. that's fine. That's fine with me. I'm also like very much so an extroverted introvert. Um, mm -hmm. I I put out a lot of energy, and then I need my recharge time. So, yep. you know, having enough space in D.C., whereas in, you know, in New York, the real estate prices are ridiculous. But oh, yeah. so being able in, at D.C. really fits fits me a lot more, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are your uh, what you, you said? Your parents are they're still like involved in church and stuff. Mm -hmm. So what do yeah. they think of like because uh, sometimes I know like in the church, there can be the stigma about video games and stuff. What do you think about your gamer doc uh, initiatives? Uh, they they have always been supportive with everything that I do in my life. Uh, they've never said a bad word about anything that I've done. I've, like I said, I've been very, very lucky. That's cool. Uh, they, my grandfather, my mom's dad, who I really never saw um, growing up, he was the one who got me an N64. And oh, wow. it, it was cool. because my mom told him to. Um, yeah. So, you know, Zelda Ocarina of Time is 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 the first game I've played. I hope it's the last game I play. Um, so that really got me into it. But they've always supported me. You know, once it became clear that, you know, I, like any other eight year old, did not possess the ability to self-regulate. Um, they 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 limited my game time. But um, yeah. they've always been very supportive. because they loved you. Right. Yeah, of course. And, <laughs> and that's how it should yeah. be. Right. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. And they they love, you know. They were a little surprised that I turned down uh, a bunch of jobs to do this, but they, you know, they support me. Yeah, that's great. Where, where, where should people look if they want to follow what you're up to? Twitter is really where, you know, where the good stuff is. Yeah. Uh, and then you can go everywhere else from there. So my Twitter is GamerDoc underscore. Cool. Um, and then Twitch is, mm, what's my Twitch? I think it's the gamer doc underscore and I'm there Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Great. Very cool. Any other projects that you're working on that you'd want to point our listeners to? Um, <laughs> it's funny because my list of projects right now is so, so very long. Um, yeah, I it depends on what you're interested in. You know, like like I said, there's definitely different aspects of it. I'm working with um, 
some people over at Western Michigan University on um, uh, getting an esports medicine curriculum made for healthcare providers. Um, I'm hoping to be at TwitchCon with a couple panel ideas. Um, and then I, I have some secret projects that I can't tell anyone about. Those cool. NDAs. <laughs> I hear you. Well, cool. Well, I'll de- definitely encourage people to go check out your work on Twitch and on and, and follow you on Twitter. Um, I've already learned a lot about uh, my health as a gamer. So um, just from just from following you on Twitter. So um, a very worthwhile follow, I would say. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, appreciate you coming on the podcast and you know sharing about your life and your passions and uh the really like super unique work that you do i don't know anybody else doing this type of work so um yeah i would just say keep keep doing it because i think it's really really unique and really cool thank you i'm 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 doing my best never before in my life have i had to convince people that they need a doctor you know normally they come to me and they're like i have pain fix me yeah so, so i'm i getting the word out you know through uh-huh. things like this, through coming on, talking to someone as intelligent and um, eloquent as yourself is definitely <laughs> helping. So I appreciate the opportunity to be here and I appreciate the good conversation. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. And not that you needed me to say, keep on doing it. I think you were going to do it anyway. <laughs> I can tell that about you, but I did just want to, just to rephrase my, I, what I was trying to say. I, I think what you're doing is really awesome. So, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks.